What's up, What's guys? Up? Wow, welcome to the channel. Welcome to the show. It's Bird House Rockstar Show. We are here, we are in the building. I have the lovely bird girls right here with me in the flesh, guys. I got the bird twins, they are in the car. Uh, of course, and, and another surprise guest, we have Bailey again. She wanted to take the ride. But we are excited for this show, guys. We are so excited to be back. Um, I'm excited to have uh, Michaela sitting right here with me. Uh, you know it's Bella. She's right there, guys. You know it's Bella. Wow, we just started. First of all, we just moved. So we got a long trip now down to the city. We just moved to the suburbs, all right? We're gonna show you the house soon. But now we have a longer trip down to the city when we have things, you know, we're from the city. So we got things planned in the city. We got to go all the way down to 13th and Locust today to Music Theater Philly. Michaela, tell them about Music Theater Philly. What's going on? This is your first week of camp all summer. And here we are, first week of Music Theater Philly. What's up? Music Theater Philly was great. So good. So why don't you give some some of the people in the audience uh, an idea of what Music Theater Philly is? Well, Music Theater Philly is like a theater, um, and it's for like all ages, and it does a lot of plays, and it's in um, Philly, and a lot of music it has in in its name, Music Theater Philly. Yeah, exactly. It's great. So it's like a musical theater, like a company for kids. Like so, basically, uh, they put on productions throughout the year. Two main productions: one in the fall, one in the winter, and then they have the summer camp. And the kid has been involved in all of those this year, and it's been really great. So she did in the fall last year. She did Frozen. She didn't do the winter or the spring play because she had the school play, um, but she did the summer camp last year and this year. So. It's a nice company, guys, and we, we love it. So we do take the trip down to Philly uh, to get the girls involved. And this is their first camp of the summer, so we are uh, we're excited about that. And I'm excited about the show on Friday. Um, we got a lot of big things planned, guys. We got a lot of things coming. Um, we can't wait to share some of the things that we're doing uh, with the house, of course, but with the old house, right? And uh, we're gonna have a lot of a uh, lot of great things to share. I can't wait to have a grand opening. I can't wait to get the girls involved. I can't wait to get you involved. Um, um, but so anyway, Bella, tell me about Music Theater Philly. How? Because this is a great experience for these girls, guys. The thing is, they grew up in a dance company, so they grew up at a dance school, and it was great. They learned a lot of core techniques, and you can see they they are just you know magnificently built they're athletic they're they're trim and lean and that's their they owe that to their ath ath athletics and their activities they've danced they've stretched they're limber and this is just the makings of an athletic juggernaut a superstar and they just have to start to channel some of those uh, uh natural gifts into uh focused attention and commitment to a sport they're going to dominate so I'm looking forward to that. But theater, I use that as a springboard to talk about theater. And I feel like theater, this this is really a great experience for them. I mean, Michaela had her 10th birthday party at Music Theater Philly. We really love this organization. And it's a great experience for them because they now can take the foundation that they have and the discipline from dance and apply it to something so much more dynamic and more broad uh, where they can be in theater. You know, Michaela's had a dancing role. Kills had a narrating role, right? They've dressed up in different things and played different parts and memorized different lines, right? She's been in uh, Thwacked, and then last year she was in, uh, what was that? Frozen. Uh, no, uh, the uh, Stars and Stripes play last year. What was that again? <laughs> uh, Schoolhouse Rock. Rock. Schoolhouse Rock, right? So, you know, they're getting exposed right now, and, um, you know, watch out for the Bird Girls, because we're going to be doing a lot of things, guys. 
and we are very much and see now they have a foundation of dance acting memorizing understanding scripts and they're going to get into uh uh playing bigger and bigger roles right being more confident and stepping up to take on the uh, challenge of starring in a play let's say right and I think Michaela has that level of star power she just has to channel it um, and Bella's growing so she has a lot of uh, work to do before she can man the stage but um, but she's the younger the younger girl she's eight so she's learning a lot um, she's very excited I just would love to see her play a supporting role although she did great guys in Frozen so you know in her age group I'm thinking of her in more so Michaela's age group but in Bella's age group she got a big part in Frozen she was the queen so I want these girls to build on this uh, uh, experience that we've given them and uh, the people around us in our village have given them to utilize their natural gifts and talents to become whatever they want to be but the key to knowing and becoming what you want to be is by putting maximum effort into things you like when you're a kid you gotta actually commit to it. That way you learn something from it. So Bella, tell me, uh, I, I gave you that, that soliloquy because I wanted to tell you how important music theater Philly is to us before Bella started to explain her experience because I want you to hear from both girls. So Bella, tell me about music theater Philly. What, what does it mean to you? What was yesterday about? Yesterday was just about um, dancing. Um, I was better not organize an event for kids without a snack plan. Maybe two. They'll love you. Especially if it's a Dunkin' Donuts box. <laughs> kids, adults still get excited over a Dunkin' do. Donuts. Yes. You bring a Dunkin' Donuts box into an office building, you're going to see adults act like giddy. They're going to get excited. So, um, Bella, how about this? Why don't you tell me about your experience at Music Theater Philly last year in Wynwood with Miss Fish Fishburne? Well, first tell me, yeah, tell me about it. Tell me who Miss Fishburne is and tell me about the play. Miss Fishburne is my friend's mom. Her name is Anderson and Coates. And um, um, they're one of my two best friends. And um, she taught us Miss Peter Kelly. And the play we did was first. It was really I got to be a queen. Almost. Well, you know, it's, it's it's a supporting character, right? So, you know, the leads in Frozen are Anna, Elsa, uh, definitely, young right? Anna, young Elsa, middle Anna, middle Elsa. Well, that's great because then a lot of people get to play lead parts, but the lead part is Elsa, Elsa and Anna as older, you know, as the you know the princesses. Um, point is, is that that's how you work your way up. You get the confidence of. From, you know, you get the confidence of working with a supporting character's part and becoming and embodying that character. And then you step up and become a, uh, you know, a lead, which is great. You guys are progressing great. You know, it's like, it's like you, you, you just um, got to build on it. And this is what the camp is about. So go there each day. The show's on Friday, so you don't have all, you know, it's not like Stars and Stripes. You gotta get in there, work hard today, work hard tomorrow, and then by Thursday, they're gonna be finishing up, right, for the show on Friday. So you gotta get in there and get there because um, that's what it's about and, and building on what, you, what you've already done. Um, so, so today, we were talking about, uh, Bella asked me a great question. And we were talking about food safety for kids, right? And I thought that'd be a great discussion for our show as we sit here. You know, kids have some good questions, and I think that we need to provide them some answers. And I realized it's some kids that are out here today that if you never told them something, they actually don't know. They don't know. So you think about 
what needs to be said understood so that you can understand how to uh, practice food safety in your own home and protect your family. So Bella, why don't you ask the question you asked me earlier and then we can get started with the conversation. Okay. Um, can you eat frozen waffles? So can you eat frozen waffles, right? So what's the difference in between frozen waffles and let's say, um, you know, ground beef that hasn't been cooked, right? And can you eat? So the, now the definition. Oh, what's the matter? Sorry. Sorry. Well, hold on. It's a rhetorical question for a second, but I will let Michaela answer it. First, we have to now uh, talk about the actual definition of the words. Can you eat? Right? Because, you know, really now you're getting into the. Uh, definition of can right because you know and then can is definitely used in two different contexts like can you actually eat it you can eat anything you want but can you eat it without getting sick i think is the question that the rest of the sentence right can you eat something without getting sick and i think that's where the word you know can is used operatively because um you know, and then you have to start to understand the difference between uh what, what you can and can't eat in order to not get sick, right? So you gotta think about why, why, why can you eat some things and not get sick, and, and, and you can't eat other things without you know, can eat something and get sick. So what we have to learn, first of all, is how they sell products out here in the real world today, right? So a factory, Nabisco, right? Craft makes a product for us. What do you think? We got those from the store. They just come out of the sky. No, someone baked those, made them in like, the same way you would make waffles at your, at your house, right? They got a uh, you know, mix going, right? And and you got a big factory. That's why you got to take kids to see stuff so they can actually visualize things. Like a big factory. Like imagine we make it in a little bowl. But imagine you're making them to sell to the whole country. You got to have a big factory with a big bowl, right? That has a way to make large amounts at one time. So it's a big machine, and now we have technology. So it's a big operation that organizes and makes and sources the wheat and all the stuff and puts it in the uh, bowl and mixes it and they cook it and they make it, right? They, they put them in, you know, you see how they have nice little squares. They make them like that, right? So, so they, in the, but they freeze them. After they've cooked them, they freeze them. So that they can, they can, they can last. They can be preserved, right? Yeah, that was gonna be my answer because Mary uh, makes pancakes um, out of batter and, um, and she flips them and then she puts them in the freezer um, for us for later. It's, exactly, it's the same concept, right? So they freeze them to save them, right? And when you want to reheat them, the best way to reheat them, I mean, obviously, when you want to eat them, the best way to eat them is to reheat them. Reheat them. See? They've already been cooked. Now, you reheat them. Now, these are designed to go in the toaster. Fair enough. You want them nice and crunchy. Put some syrup on it, some butter. It's tasty, really tasty. Now, we have to go and delve into the word can, right? Can you eat the item x item that we're talking about without getting sick now we have to think about why you get sick from eating something that isn't cooked and what does cooked mean right first of all when you're talking about cooked you're dealing with meats because meats were alive right meats were alive so they're living organisms and living organisms have and develop disease like bacteria right and they may even carry a virus you never know right my point is you have to be careful with your meats because of that fact, right? So now, and what happens if you eat meat that did develop a disease or a bacteria? You just ate that and it might be in you. So now you have bacterial disease or your, your stomach, whatever the case may be. Salmonella, right, is a, is a virus, right? That, or I think it's a bacteria, but the point is the harmful bacteria is a human. Salmonella poisoning or whatever. We could get into the dictionary. We're just talking on the show. But, but you cannot eat meat that is going bad because it developed a certain level of bacteria and disease inside of that meat that if you eat it, you will get perhaps sick and you could die from the bacteria. The bacteria could overtake you so much so that you can't recover. Uh, and it has happened. That's what people in the old days understand. They've known people that have perhaps 
uh, gotten really sick or died from eating something bad. That's what makes you absolutely sure about your food safety and you're not doing anything questionable. Don't risk your life over an eight dollar piece of chicken. Like it's not worth it. <laughs> you have to understand that when you're hungry and you see that last piece of chicken, you already got plans for it, and you say, "Listen, I'm this chicken's going down." You better realize if it's bad, don't eat. If it smells bad to the nose, like if you smell chicken or meat or definitely chicken that doesn't smell good to the nose, you should not eat that. I know that's a, just a, a eye test, a nose test, but I think your senses are very important in, in, in protecting you, right? If it smells bad to the nose, you should not eat it. Now, if you smell it and it's like, hmm, I don't smell any stench, it's probably fine. Yeah. Wash it off so you get any any outside bacteria off and then cook it well. The cooking has, now this is where we get into the cooked and not cooked, right? You cook meats because, we got the twins guys, I didn't tell you the twins are part of the show. Stop, stop, stop. give the twins, help the twins. Oh, she's always trying. Listen guys, so you cook your meats because the fire, see, and this is where you think, God, Give me a cup. You, you know what? We thank God for the things that we thank God for the things He gave us naturally. Something like fire. Think about how important fire has been to human beings, right? We have literally built an entire world because we have access to fire. Um, and um, we uh, use fire. Fire has the ability to kill, high, high temperatures kill pretty much everything, right? So high temperatures kill bacteria in, in, in meat. So once you cook the cheeseburger, the hamburger on the flame and cook it through and apply high heat to it, you're killing any remaining bacteria that might be present. And then it's good to eat for a human. So that, first of all, is the difference between what a cooked piece of meat is, like fish. All animals have bacteria in them, and when you kill them, when you kill an animal, it develops, it's going to develop bacteria, just like poop will develop bacteria. Flies get right on top of it, and and because it's a living organism. So so you gotta think about that. And, and, and raw meats carry bacteria. So if you put raw meats on a surface, that means that that surface is now contaminated. That's a new word, I should have that word pop up on the screen. Contaminated. And once something is contaminated, you cannot use it anymore. You have to go and cleanse it. Um, and that's serious, right? Contamination is very serious. You have to think about it. And that's what kids have to learn because unfortunately kids don't think about contamination or cross-contamination, right? You can cross-contaminate something. By having something contaminated touch something that's not contaminated, right? But we have to teach kids about the seriousness of this so that they can learn it and practice it in their own lives because it's very important to your health and safety, right? So you think about uh, 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 all meats need to be cooked, first of all, start there. Then you get into other things like eggs, things that anything that came from an animal can have disease and poison in it if it is a bad batch or it's contaminated, however you want to think about it. But then you get to things like wheats and grains and rices, like that's not poisonous. Like if, if lettuce goes bad or, no, no, it's wrong because you can, again, back to living organisms, you can have salmonella or bacteria on lettuce that can be very harmful, very, very, you know. But my point is, is like, what, like breads, like if you put bread on the counter, it's not gonna get contaminated. If you put a slab of chicken on the counter, it is contaminated and you have to then clean and wash that counter. Um, we gotta teach kids about this by, by practice, by letting them into the kitchen. The girls are always in our kitchen and they're learning slowly but surely on how to do certain things in the kitchen. Baking so far, and they've heat, heated things up in the toaster, let's say, or whatever, but they haven't done anything in the way of cooking. But that's what we're gonna also be using for our youth guys. We're gonna be using Birdhouse Riverside to host cooking classes and cooking sessions for children, getting them in the kitchen, 
can't mess anything up, especially if you follow safety rules. They love watching uh, Is It Cake, right? You can, we can have a whole episode of Is It Cake right there. We got a beautiful kitchen back there in Philly. And uh, we can have the kids over and have a whole cooking expo expose, exp expedition or exhibition. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, have fun. But we got to get the kids. You only learn cooking by cooking. Right, you only by learn by doing. And and is it cake? We can have is it cake on. They could be replicating the show, um, and that's what I have the girls involved in right now. I just gave the girls two jobs. Bella's a writer, and McGill's a production assistant. All right. Next thing you know, they're going to be producing their own shows, and that's what I want them to get in the mindset of is what what's out here for work in the 21st century. Well, I learned how to produce a show. That's a real thing. You learned how to produce a show from scratch. And that's why I want to keep building this show, guys. Please support the show. Like and subscribe. Comment down below. Um, and also consider donating to the channel. Because this is the way that we're going to teach our kids on how to become uh, valuable, right, in the 21st century. What is your value in the 21st century, right? What is that tied to? Well, it's certainly tied to your skills. What can you do for people? Somebody out here want to produce a show, want to get it off the ground. Let me tell you, Michaela. How many people in your in your generation are going to want to produce a show that they've thought of and but they have no clue on where to start and how to get it going and they're scared they need confidence and if you tell them listen we produce a show we've been producing and creating shows since i was 10 i'll help you with that you'll make a lot of money in the 21st century kids you hear that that was a message if you want to learn a skill think about what everyone wants to do Donnie's in the background. He's helping me. <laughs> He's giving me the chant, like, preach. But no. Donnie, listen. Listen. You have to think of a skill that everybody wants to do. What does everybody want to do? They want a podcast. They want a show. But they don't know how to produce and build the show. Learn how to write. Learn production. Uh, learn how to produce. Then you learn how to edit just for your own knowledge, which you don't want to spend your time editing. Right? You learn how to talk on camera. Then you 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 making yourself 21st century hireable. Right? You don't, you know, we're not creating jobs for the 20th century. Um, um and, and 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 that's what I want for Michaela and Isabella. So we got the legendary media. Uh they worked for us. Uh and this is what their jobs are as production assistant, writer, producer. And and then they can be an, an advisor and consultant to other young people and others as they get better and more mature on, on how to do it. People are going to need to know how to produce a show, how to get a show rocking, right? How to perform. So that's what I want Michaela to be thinking about. Because uh, this is what we're doing here on, on Birdhouse Rockstar. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and they have a couple of jobs. Look, she's a host. She's a uh, content creator, writer, production assistant. And, 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 and uh, she can even get camera operator if she learned how to do that. <laughs> I've been using a regular camera since I was six. See, there you go. That's gonna be her pitch. That's her sales pitch, guys. She's she's got experience now, and we're gonna write her a resume soon. As soon as she put get something to put on there, we got Birdhouse Rockstar Show. Maybe we should set set a threshold of how many followers, how many subscribers we need, until she can say on her resume that she's a uh, podcast host out here. Listen. Um. So yeah, so we're talking about food safety. Can you can you eat a frozen waffle? You sure can. It's just gonna be like eating a frozen waffle. It's not gonna be it's not gonna be good. It's just gonna taste like a nasty, crunchy piece of ice. That's why you put it in the toaster because it's tasty in the toaster. So now, if you eat a frozen Oh, you eat a frozen piece of meat, that would actually be pretty hard. But it's also probably not good. You want to de-thaw it and cook it. So thawing something out, that's what they need to learn, guys. We're going to be teaching a lot more about food safety. Uh, Donnie.
also a lot more about food safety because we're gonna learn how to thaw things out. What does thawing mean after something's been frozen? Obviously, in today's day and age, the best way to have something is certainly fresh, never frozen. So we might as well start thinking in those terms. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get these girls in the kitchen. We're gonna have an event. We're gonna have a cooking event one day, all right? Maybe it'll be uh, sometimes for our parents and children and sometimes for for just the girls, just the young kids and the boys. The boys can come too, but you know, Michaela's friends are girls right now. So she could have all the girls over. And no boys, it's girls, unless they're men. Well, yeah, they're dads too. But no, um, here we are, guys. Burr House Rockstar Show, summer 2024. We got a lot going on, guys. We just moved. We moved out to the suburbs. So the Burr family taking the suburbs, guys. We got a beautiful property. Um, it's just about an acre. It's just, you know, the biggest piece of land we've ever really seen. And we're very happy with it. Anything bigger would just be a little too big, frankly. I, I wouldn't want two acres. Um, we got enough right now to... Uh, get started. What's Donnie talking about? He has two pairs of shoes. Donnie is on the show, guys. You see him back there? He's probably mad I'm in the shot. That's what he's mad about. But no, um... Donnie, is Libby up? Hey, Libby! Hi, girl! Hey! <laughs> yeah, Donnie. Like, don't forget me! <laughs> Oh, we just were talking about that. Don't throw shoes up here, guys. I am driving. Um, guys, yeah, so, uh, listen, guys. Burr House Rockstar Show, I hope that was informative for you. We are going to close the show down, so don't forget to subscribe in five, four, three, two, one and subscribe don't forget to hit that notification bell and if you don't you ain't profit all right guys listen we love you i want you guys to have a great day spend it with the people you love get outside enjoy life all right live it enjoy the experience enjoy the journey we'll see you tomorrow okay peace out